The Board of Aldermen will now come to order. Madam Clerk, will you please call the roll? Alderwoman Tyus? Alderwoman Flowers? Alderman Bosley? Alderman Moore? Alderwoman Hubbard? Alderwoman Ingracia? Alderwoman Young? Present. Alderman Conway? Alderman Ortman? Alderman Vollmer? Alderman Villa? Alderman Arnowitz? Here. Alderman Wessels? Here. Alderwoman Howard? Here. Alderwoman Florida? Here. Alderwoman Behringer? Alderman Rohde? Alderman Kennedy? Alderwoman Davis? Alderman Schmid? Here. Alderman French? Alderman Boyd? Present. Alderman Vaccaro? Alderman Ogilvy? Alderman Cohn, Alderman Williamson, Alderman Carter, Alderman Crewson, President Reed, Alderman Hubbard, Alderman Conway, Alderman Vollmer, Alderman Florida, Alderman Rohde, Alderman Kennedy, Alderman Davis, Alderman French, President Reed, 22 present. Thank you. We will be led in prayer today by Alderman Moore's younger brother, Pastor Donnie Moore, from St. Samuel Church of God in Christ. Will you all please stand for prayer? Good morning. Good morning. Thank you, Ms. Young. I'm very honored and privileged to have this opportunity to stand in your presence once again. I have only one concern, and I'm, I'm, I'm being asked to come over and offer prayer for you, and I'm hoping that one day in the near future I can get some of you to come and visit me at St. Samuel's Temple Church of God in Christ on the corner of Evans and Taylor. Let us bow our heads. Dear God, again, we thank you for this opportunity. We consider it an honor and a privilege to stand in this assembly with people that you have provided for us to serve this great community of the city of St. Louis, Missouri. God, as they prepare to go on break, we anticipate the return to whereas they will do the things and everything that they do, God, let your hand, your will, your word be their guide. God, we do bind every satanic force. Although we are one, not one, God, but we are going and striving toward the same goal, the betterment of this community and mankind. Be with every legislation, be with every decision, let us be together in our decision-making. These and other blessings we do ask in thy son's name. Thank God. Amen. I'd like to ask Alderman Bosley to approach the dais for a special order of the day. President and members of the board, it gives me great pleasure to be able to stand here before you and talk about an organization that has done so much and is doing so much for the health of young people, not only in the city of St. Louis, but anybody anywhere who would be willing to listen. We have Mr. Ray John Perry here, who is a higher official in that organization 
and he's going to address you can't hear me oh he's going to address what that organization is all about and how it can be of help to each and every one of our communities so mr john perry like very much to be able to present this resolution to you we might read it later but resolutions are generally so long but i'd like for you to hang it on the wall in your office so that everybody that comes in even a hundred years from now will know that the board of Alderman paused in the busy deliberations that we have down here talking about everything imaginable and everybody who wants something comes to this board of Alderman that we took time out to honor H-E-A-L which is the healthy effective alternatives to live. Thank you so very much, Mr. John Perry, please. I, I, I like very much to present to him this resolution that was passed by the Board of Aldermen, and this is something that he can hang on his wall in his office and share it with all of his friends that shows that the Board of Aldermen took time out in its busy schedule to honor H-E-A-L, Healthy Alternatives to Live. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Um, how you guys been doing? My name is Ray John Perry. Um, we started this, uh, this organization, this group, I guess about last year, about October. Uh, I've been a vegan for about 10 years, you know, so I'm really big on health. Um, I know the community um, needed more assistance within health. Um, so me and a lady named Chris, Chris, uh, Chris Jackson, Chris Jackson, we uh, got together, partnered up, and uh, it'll be a year in October that we've been traveling around to different parts of the city and uh, different recreational centers, um, just about anywhere that anybody invites us out. We did the uh, Midwest Taste, a couple other different venues that we uh, had, we stepped out. And uh, I do a raw food demonstration uh, as far as like the whole, uh, being a vegan, being a raw foodist, um, you're actually dealing with the enzymes X, Y, and Z. But, um, Chris does nutrition. We have a um, um, fitness coordinator, the whole nine. So uh, if you guys hear or see any flyers around, this is what we're doing. We just actually set up uh, a station in Atlanta too. So we're kind of traveling around the states, kind of doing uh, healthy alternatives to live. I thank you, I appreciate you. return to our order of business. Um, introduction of honored guest, Alderman from the 9th. Thank you, Madam President today and members of the board. I'd like to have for my honored guest, Ronnie Auer, former committeeman of the 9th Ward and state representative who is with us today. It's cool enough. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Alderwoman from the 16th. Thank you, Madam President of the Board of Aldermen. I would like to have as my special guests today, Anthony Lancia with the AGC and David Holmes with the Plumbers and Pipefitters. Alderman from the 22nd, double D. Thank you, Madam President and members of the board. I have two special guests, my regular special guest, Mr. Chris Pickle with AT&T, and also a new special guest today, Mr. Daniel Flynn with Neil Flynn and Associates. He's over there. Alderman from the 23rd. Yes, um, I'd like to have as my special guest, 
uh, Bruce and Gary from the Painters Union, uh, <coughs> Celeste Reeder from the Realtors, Harry Kennedy, and Al from the Firefighters. Alderwoman from the 14th. I have a very special guest today. Her name is Joanna Bachman. She's in the gallery. She's visiting here from Washington, D.C. and doing research on the Civil War in our fine city. And I'd like to give her a hearty welcome to the city of St. Louis. Also, I'd like to uh, welcome Shirley Stennis from the Ammer and UE family and my, um, Senate, my senator committeeman, Harry Kennedy. Thank you. Alderman from the fourth. I'd like to have as my guest today, Shirley Stennis from Ameren, UE, and anyone in here have any lotion? I need some lotion. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Alderman from the 14th. Oh, wait. We did that. 12th. To the board, I'd like to introduce for my special guest today, she is actually watching on YouTube this morning, my granddaughter, Natalie. Thank you very much. All right, the alderman from 13th is recognized on approval of minutes for the June 21st meeting. Thank you, Dad. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam President. I move to approve the minutes of the June 21st meeting. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the minutes from June 21st be approved. All in favor say aye. Opposed? By your vote, you've approved the minutes of June 21st. Report of city officials. Report of city officials can be found in sections A, B, and C of the agenda and have been placed in all aldermen's mailboxes. Petitions and communications? We have none. Are there any aldermen that would like to move bills from the informal calendar? Alderwoman from the first. Madam President and members of the board, I'd move to uh, take Board Bill 116 off of the perfection and formal calendar and move it to the uh, perfection consent calendar, please. All right. The alderwoman from the first has requested that Board Bill 116 be moved to our informal calendar. So noted, and it will be taken care of. You don't need to make a motion. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, first reading of board bills. Board Bill 128, sponsored by Alderman Conway, an ordinance approving a blighting study and a redevelopment plan for 4155 Shenandoah and containing a severability clause. Board Bill 129, sponsored by Alderman Conway, an ordinance approving a blighting study and a redevelopment plan for 4045 through 47 Botanical containing a severability clause. Board Bill 130, sponsored by Alderman Conway, an ordinance approving a blighting study and a redevelopment plan for 4031 Shenandoah containing a severability clause. Board Bill 131, sponsored by Alderman Villa, and Arnas approving a blighting study and a redevelopment plan for 623 through 25 Holly Hills and containing a severability clause. Board Bill 132 was not used this session. Board Bill 133, sponsored by Alderman Ortman and Arnas approving a blighting study and a redevelopment plan for 2809 McNair containing a severability clause. Board Bill 134, sponsored by Alderwoman Ingracia and Arnas approving a blighting study and a redevelopment plan for 2526 California containing a severability clause. Board Bill 135, sponsored by Alderwoman Howard and Ordinance Proving a Blighting Study and a Redevelopment Plan for 4903 Lansdowne containing a severability clause. That's the extent of our first readings. Reference to committee. To the Neighborhood Development Committee, Board Bills 128, 129, 130, 131, 134, and 135. To the Housing Committee, Board Bill 133. That's the extent of reference to committees. Second reading and report of standing committees. The following board bill was reported out of the Legislation Committee. Board Bill 89, Committee Substitute, sponsored by President Reed and Alderwoman Barringer and Arnest Reed an ordinance reaffirming the provisions of ordinances 62391, 6669167617684096893 and 68934, establishing a policy for the disclosure of potential conflicts of interest and substantial interest for certain municipal officials and containing an emergency clause. Following board bills were reported out of the Ways and Means Committee. Board Bill number 70, sponsored by Alderwoman Flowers, an ordinance recommended by the Board of Public Service authorizing and directing the mayor and the comptroller to execute a 
upon receipt of and in consideration the sum of one dollar and other good and valuable consideration a permanent easement which shall give, grant, extend, and confer on the Procter & Gamble Manufacturing Company the right to build and maintain pipelines containing an emergency clause. Board Bill 94, sponsored by Alderman Ogilvie, and ordinance authorizing and directing the mayor and the comptroller to execute upon receipt of and in consideration the sum of $12,000 and other good and valuable consideration a quick claim deed to reminds release of forever quick claim to KAM Investments LLC certain city owned property located in city block 4627 property known by address of 6800 rear Manchester. Board Bill 122 sponsored by President Reed and Alderman Kennedy and ordinance pertaining to the transit sales Transit sales tax directing the tre treasurer to deposit funds received pursuant to sales tax into the city public transit sales tax trust fund account one appropriating ten million thirty two thousand five hundred dollars from the said sales tax and containing a severability clause. Board Bill 123, sponsored by President Reed and Alderman Kennedy and earnest pertaining to the transit sales tax directing the treasurer to deposit funds received pursuant to said tax into the city public transit sales tax trust fund account two, appropriating $10,032,500 from the said sales tax and containing a severability clause. Board Bill 134, sponsored 124, sponsored by President Reed and Alderman Kennedy and ordinance appropriating the sum of $20,065,000, which sum is hereby appropriated out of the Transportation Trust Fund to the Bi-State Development Agency for Transportation Purposes and further providing that the appropriation is conditional upon the Bi-State Development Agency supplying the Board of Estimate and Apportionment an annual evaluation report, further providing that in no event shall the Comptroller draw warrants on the treasurer or for an amount greater than the amount proceeds directed deposited in the transportation trust fund during a period from July 1st 2013 through June the 30th 2014 and containing a severability clause board bill 127 sponsored by all the woman young and ordinance recommended by the Parking Commission authorizing and directing the city acting through the treasurer in her capacity as supervisor of parking meters to issue a subordinated parking revenue bonds in an aggregate principal amount not to exceed $1,500,000 appointing a bond register and paying agent in a connection with the bond, approving and authorizing the execution of a supplemental trust indenture number three and continuing disclosure, di disclosure agreement if required, and a tax compliance agreement authorizing no negotiated sale of the bond and execution and delivery of a bond purchase contract and containing a severability clause. The following board bills were reported out of the Ways and Means were reported out of the Housing Committee. Board Bill 108, sponsored by Alderman Rohde, an ordinance recommended by the Planning Commission to change the zoning and property from E multiple family dwelling district and J industrial district to the H area commercial district in city block 3890 for properties on Parkview Place, Children's Place, and Parkview Place and containing an emergency clause. Board Bill 109, sponsored by Alderman Villa and ordinance affirming adoption of a redevelopment plan, redevelopment area, redevelopment agreement, redevelopment project authorizing the execution of a redevelopment agreement between the city and Carondelet Broadway TIF Incorporated for the redevelopment of Carondelet Coke redevelopment area, designating Carondelet Broadway TIF Incorporated as developer of the redevelopment area and containing a severability clause. Board Bill 110, sponsored by Alderman Villa and ordinance recommended by the Board of Estimate and Apportionment, authorizing and directing the issuance and delivery of not to exceed $7 million plus issuance cost principal amount of tax increment revenue notes for Carondelet Coke redevelopment project containing a severability clause. Board Bill 111, sponsored by Alderwoman Young and ordinance recommended by the Board of Estimate and Apportionment, authorizing the city to enter into a development agreement with Anders Minkler Huber and Helm LLP authorizing the city to issue its taxable industrial development revenue bonds 
Series 2013 and a principal amount not to exceed $2,300,000 for the purpose of providing funds to pay the cost of acquiring certain equipment for industrial development project in the city. Board Bill 113, sponsored by Alderman Rohde, in order is adopting and approving a revision to the St. Louis Innovation District Tax Increment Financing Redevelopment Plan, adopting and approving a redevelopment project for the redevelopment project area A, 1A, establishing the RPA 1A2 sub-account of, of St. Louis Innovation District Special Allocation Fund containing a severability clause. Board Bill 114, sponsored by Alderman Rohde, and ordinance authorizing the execution of a First Amendment to the redevelopment agreement between the city and St. Louis Innovation District containing a severability clause. Board Bill 115, sponsored by Alderman Rohde, and ordinance authorizing the issuance and delivery of one or more series tax increment revenue notes in an aggregate principal amount not to exceed $167 million plus cost of issuance for certain reimbursed reimbursable redevelopment project costs associated with the St. Louis Innovation District redevelopment area and containing a severability clause. Board Bill 119, sponsored by Alderwoman Davis and ordinance, amending ordinance 65857 pertaining to the redevelopment agreement between the city and Grand Center, amending <clears throat> same to authorize an application for abatement for the 3207 Washington project containing a severability clause. Following board bills were reported out of the Public Employee Committee, Board Bill 118, sponsored by Alderwoman Florida and ordinance pertaining to the employees of the retirement system of the city, authorizing and directing the Board of Trustees of the retirement system to seek a qualified status determination letter from the Internal Revenue Service and to adopt regulations relating thereto co containing a severability clause and containing an emergency clause. Following board bills were reported out of the Transportation and Commerce Committee. Board Bill 55, sponsored by Alderwoman Young, and ordinance authorizing and directing the mayor and the comptroller to execute upon receipt of and in consideration a sum of $30 or $10 for each conveyance to easements onto the Missouri Highways and Transportation Commission forever the right and easement to construct and maintain a lighting system for its Highway 6440 in it in the under, in under and across city block 450 and 418 and adjacent areas containing a severability and emergency clause. That's the extent of our second readings. Report of special committee. We have none. Perfection consent calendar. Board Bill 86 sponsored by Alderman Schmidt and ordinance authorizing and directing the mayor to enter into agreement with the National Association of County and City Health Officials for a 2013 community guide capacity building demonstration program funded by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention grant title and containing a severability and containing an emergency clause. <clears throat> Board Bill 187 sponsored Board Bill 87 sponsored by Alderman Schmidt and on its authorizing and directing the mayor to submit all necessary applications and to enter into agreement with Missouri Foundation for Health or any other agency for Missouri Foundation for Health Basic Support Cycle 3 program and authorizing the mayor upon approval of the Board of Estimate and Apportionment to expend any funds received by said grants to fulfill the obligations of the grants and containing an emergency clause. Board Bill 93 sponsored by Alderman Cohn and ordinance to repeal ordinance 6, 6 to repeal ordinance 40429 relating to the regulation and restriction of prophylactics. Board Bill 83, sponsored by Alderwoman Young, and ordinance recommended by the Board of Public Service authorizing and directing the city <coughs> by and through its Board of Public Service to enter into an agreement with the Missouri Highways Transportation Commission for the commission to provide without cost to the city various roadway infrastructure improvements and reconstruction for the park over the highway project and 3rd Street Washington ramp reversal project. Board Bill 120, committee substitute, sponsored by Alderman Rohde in ordinance recommended by the Board of Public Service, establishing a multi-phase public works and improvement project for the design construction of various roadway infrastructure and safety improvements designated herein as the Vanderbilt Transportation Corridor Project and containing a public work emergency clause. Board Bill 116, sponsored by Alderwoman Tyus, 
and ordinance, <clears throat> excuse me, an ordinance to repeal ordinance 69284, providing for the unconditional vacation and abolition of a public right of way in the east west alley in city block 4380 east, is bounded by Penrose Park, Euclid, Penrose, and Albert. That's the extent of perfection consent. Alderman from the 24th. Thank you, Thank you Madam Speaker. Um, I request we move Board Bill 83 to the uh, regular perfection calendar. I didn't hear what Board Bill. Board Bill 83. All right, we've moved Board Bill 83 to the regular perfection calendar. And other than that, I'll recognize the Alderman for the 13th on the perfection consent calendar. Thank you, Madam President. I move to uh, perfect the aforementioned bills in the uh, consent on the consent calendar. It's been moved by the Alderman from the 13th that we approve the perfection consent calendar and seconded by the Alderman from the 22nd. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed? By your vote, you have approved the consent calendar. Board Bill 83, perfection. Board Bill 83, sponsored by Alderwoman Young, and on is recommended by the Board of Public Service, authorizing and directing the city by and through the Board of Public Service to enter into an agreement with the Missouri Highways and Transportation Commission for the commission to provide, without cost to the city, various roadway infrastructure improvements and reconstruction for the park over the highway project and 3rd Street Washington Ramp Reversal Project. Alderman from the 13th. Thank you for handling my bill. Thank, thank you, Madam President. I move for our perfection of Board Bill 83. It's been moved by the Alderman from the 13th and seconded by the Alderman from the 15th that Board Bill 83 be perfected. Is there any discussion? Alderman from the 24th. Thank, thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, I'm not going to belabor this, <laughs> and I'm not going to suggest that we give the money back. Um, but I was, I was thinking about a comment that the alderman, alderman from the 28th Ward made um, when we were talking about the, the 316th uh, percent sales tax, and she said, St. Louis doesn't uh, deserve a mediocre project. And this is, a, this is a big project downtown. I think we all have a stake in downtown, and I think the I think the purpose of the, the, of the project was to improve, increase pedestrian connectivity downtown. And my, my big concern is that MoDOT has really designed a project that does not put people first, does not put people living downtown or working downtown or tourists downtown first. It still puts a highway interchange at the centerpiece of this big downtown project, this project that we've been sort of seeking for a long time. Now, I, I, uh, I tried to take every opportunity I could to speak to MoDOT about this, the mayor's office, attend these meetings, provide you know, feedback, make suggestions, um, with, you know, with the intent of sort of representing the uh, the, the pedestrian user downtown. And as MoDOT released subsequent plans, I think a close analysis of those plans just reveals a lot of, of missed opportunities uh, to do a great pedestrian project. Um, where's the alderman from the 25th? The alderman from the 25th yield to, to questions. Yes. Thank you. In 2010, <clears throat> I believe you sponsored a complete streets bill that passed. That's correct. Now, that bill is kind of, it's not, it's not the strongest complete streets bill, maybe because it doesn't include you know, specific design requirements, but um, it does speak to an ideal that we are striving for, I think, in these, in these public works projects. Do, do you... <laughs> Are these microphones working? Barely, barely. Excuse uh, me, um, Alderman for the 25th, you weren't recognized, but now you are, okay? 
proceed. Thank you. Um, we are obviously doing some things in this project that will be good for pedestrians. And I think we are also doing other things that are a step in the, in the wrong direction. Things like closing Washington Avenue as it goes east. Um, you know, a street that's been there over 100 years. Are we hitting, in your opinion, are we hitting the highest marks? Are we getting that ideal that you were looking for when you passed the complete streets policy in 2010? Well, as I've uh, stated before in the past in committee hearings and, and other meetings and uh, conversations, you know, I think there's a lot that could be done in relation to this project. I'm not happy particularly with the uh, you know, plans that are in, in the designs for the interstate interchanges and also Washington <coughs> Avenue, which has been a city street running from the river to the westward edge of our city for pretty much the entire uh, life of our city at this point. But, um, I, I think there is definitely a lot uh, to be desired and, you know, in conversations with MoDOT as well, you know, and with the mayor's office and also with uh, Alderwoman Young, uh, we are currently working on plans to at least try and make the city streets down there more pedestrian and bicycle friendly uh, in terms of the striping of the streets at this point. The infrastructure uh, changes would not take place that would necessarily meet the spirit of that policy. Right, and the, the spirit of the policy is not to sort of scramble to do these add-ons at the last minute. The spirit of the policy is to put people on the same footing as cars from the beginning of the design. Not, not necessarily above automobile traffic, but at least on an equal basis as automobile traffic. Is well, uh, multimodal traffic, so not just pedestrians and automobiles, but you know, also folks you know, in wheelchairs and you know, buses, certainly trying to accommodate all forms of, of transit. So, thank you, I appreciate it. Thanks. So, we're doing the project. My, my hope is just that um, between now and, and final implementation, MoDOT, I think, keeps their ears open because I think as Alderman from the 25th has sort of proved in the last month that there are still opportunities within the scope of this project to do something that is, is better and more meaningful for uh, people enjoying downtown and not just people driving <laughs> past downtown on the way to the airport, which is what MoDOT seemed to think was the most important aspect of this project as I spent hours and hours talking to them about it. So. Um, with, with that, I will uh, sit down and also request a uh, roll call vote. Thank you. Alderman for the 13th, you're recognized to close on Board Bill 83. Thank you, Madam Chair. I renew my motion on Board Bill 83. All right. Madam Clerk, will you call the roll? Alderman Tyers. Alderman Flowers. Alderman Bosley. Alderman Moore, Alderwoman Hubbard, Alderwoman Ingracia, Alderwoman Young, Aye. Aye. Alderman Conway, Aye. Alderman Ortman, Aye. Alderman Vollmer, Alderman Villa, Aye. Alderman Arnowitz, Aye. Alderman Wessels, Aye. Alderwoman Howard, Aye. Alderwoman Florida, Alderwoman Berenger, Aye. Alderman Rowdy, Aye. Alderman Kennedy, Aye. Alderwoman Davis, Aye. Alderman Schmidt, Aye. Alderman French, Aye. Alderman Boyd, Aye. Alderman Vaccaro, Aye. Alderman Ogilvy, Aye. Alderman Cohn, Alderman Williamson, yeah. Alderman Carter, Aye. Alderman Cruson, President Reed, Alderman Bosley, Alderman Moore, Aye. Alderman Hubbard, 
Ottoman Vomer, Ottoman French, Ottoman Williamson, twenty two I votes, two present. By your vote, you perfected Board Bill eighty three. That's the extent of board bills for perfection. We will dispense with items 17 through 22, miscellaneous and unfinished business. We have none. Announcements. There were no meetings next week until Friday, Friday, July the 12th, full board meeting, 10, 10 a.m. in the chambers. That's the extent of my announcements. No other announcements. The alderman from the 13th is recognized unexcused alderman. Thank you, Madam President. I move to excuse the alderman from the 5th, 10th, 21st, and President Reed from the uh, due to due to unnecessary due to necessary absence. It's been moved by the alderman from the 13th and seconded by the alderman from the 11th. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed. By your vote, you have excused the alderman. The alderman from the 13th is recognized on the adjournment motion. Thank you, Madam President. I move to adjourn the meeting until 10 a.m. July 12th. It's been moved and seconded that we'll, this meeting be adjourned. All in favor, say aye. Aye. And by your, all in, opposed, by your vote, you've adjourned the meeting. <laughs>